Joe Henderson's amazing rhythmical arpeggio concept have influenced a lot of great players. When Chris Potter was sitting in with Joe Henderson Big Band, he absorbed all this amazing modern jazz. The influence of Joe Henderson in Chris Potter's playing is obvious. Let's dig into this. The rhythmical concept of playing very short notes and using very long rests fits totally in the rhythmical concept of this tune. The rhythmical concept of the modern jazz saxophone is much more varied. It has much faster runs. It has a much more varied mix of rhythmical patterns. Joe Henderson is playing small rhythmical phrases moving around his target notes, starting on all beats and all off beats of the bar. <laughs> this by fixing in on a target note and playing the surrounding notes around it, the enclosures. The target note in this example could be all of the notes, both the chord notes and the extension. I made these schematics to make it clear what the target notes are and what the enclosures are. Basically, the whole scale with enclosures around all the target notes. Now start moving this pattern around in the bar in different rhythmical places. Begin simple and move it down the line. You can do this with any target note in any tune, but make sure you have the right enclosures for it. Get into these rhythmical enclosures by downloading the exercises and link on the Patreon in all 12 keys. Whereas Chris Potter in his solo is using the articulation and the phrasing to change the rhythmical patterns. <laughs> Focus on a small line and move this through the target notes and add interesting articulation. Here it's as simple as long and short articulation on quarter notes. And if you want to emphasize the rhythm even more, omit more notes. The power of leaving notes out are extreme. You hear this effect of making space. The focus on the rhythm you are actually playing is much greater this way. Add a bit of the Joe Henderson concept with the enclosures in eight notes. An approach note before this quarter note gives a crazy great effect. Simplicity is talking. The first sentence of Joe Henderson, the major six. And straight up Joe Henderson Chris Potter making exactly the same sound, the major six. You do really not want to miss out on the great major six sound on minor chords. Try to play the minor major six arpeggio and use the major six as a target note. Using the major six on this minor chord gives you this great almost outside effect. The scales you want to use when you're playing minor and using the major 6 or the major 13 is the Dorian mode. One of the amazing things about this when you're playing on these minor chords is there are no avoid notes. All notes are good. A great way to use the major 6, the 11th and the 9, so all the extensions, is using them as enclosures towards the main chord. This really gives great approach notes, great enclosures towards these target notes, the main chord. Using the full trials like this enables you to make very, very strong lines. Because of the strong triad structure. Licks and exercises with the major six and the other extensions as target notes and as enclosures are ready for you to download on the Patreon. Check the link in the description. The way Joe Henderson finds his way through complicated rhythmical patterns and still find his ways to the target notes are amazing. 
Johansson just lays the scale pattern down in groups of three and even changes the key to B flat halfway. There are tons of things I really dig of this pattern, but two are really obvious. The rhythmical three groupings and that all chords are moving down, not up. Try moving this downward scale pattern, but also move it up in the scale and try to change the key. This challenges you to think the timing and also different keys. Passing these rhythmical patterns over the bar line gives you extreme flexibility. Using the triads as extensions gives you really strong lines and at the same time you get this extension sound. These amazingly strong triad structures give you super hip lines. Check these out. Start by knowing your triads in this game. In this example, Chris Potter is using the F-sharp minor triad and the G-sharp diminished triad. These two creates a lot of tension. Using these extension triad shapes is a great way of you to leading back to the target notes of the main chord. And this way get a lot of emphasis on the target notes. The whole triad structure cries to be resolved. Much more use of the trial scale patterns and the triad extensions can be found in the full lesson manual you can download on Patreon. <laughs> Because of the strong character of the triad, you also get into this modern jazz sound. Mixing new licks by taking all these methods and getting into this modern jazz sound cocktail. I really recommend you to go all in on these two videos to get much more information on modern jazz saxophone playing. Play music, have fun.